but you know sometimes with color you feel like empty spaces <laughs> here you have to add more detail to the line art and that can take a little bit more of time um, okay but now it, it takes way less time like I feel if it was full color right now we would be at page 15 maybe yeah that's still yeah. impressive and I just want to say that that's still impressive by the way <laughs> 15 pages in full color <laughs> yeah. is wild it's it's crazy yeah, I don't especially know how you with do the amount of detail she puts in <laughs> <laughs> really I don't know how you do it Hello and welcome to the Square Corner Podcast. My name is JC Squared, where I will be interviewing many guests from the Hot Wheels community and beyond. Today's guests I have with me, and that's guests plural, are the Project Territory superstars, Alsig and TPMVA. Welcome to the podcast. What's up? <laughs> well, that was a great introduction. <laughs> Good. Hey, didn't hey, expect, hey, didn't hey. <laughs> of course, of course. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, so I guess we should start introducing ourselves. Um, hi, my name is TPMVA. I am the writer and co-creator of the web manga Project Territory. And I'm also, <laughs> almost everyone knows me because of the comic for the finish line in fan arts, basically. So I'm the manga artist of this comic, well, manga. Yeah, that's so it's so awesome to see y'all in person. You know, it's it's probably the first time we've ever met in person. Um, maybe, maybe not. I can't exactly remember if we've met in person, TPMVA, or on video call. Um, Same nah, thing. I, well, I've heard of your I've heard of your name across the Hot Wheels community and all that stuff through my um my work with other members, especially in the Fog Realm movie. Ooh. Um, and yeah, yeah nah, and. Yeah, I've heard I've heard of your name and everything, and I've also heard of our six name as well because I really love the comic adaptation of the finish line. Like I, I thought that was an amazing comic. So, no, nah, yeah. and I'm I'm relatively new, so it's very much like step like dipping my toes into a new community. You know what I mean? Yeah, and and that actually gets me to what I was going to ask for both of y'all here in a second, which is where did you first get into accelerators? Like, what year was it? Or were you a kid or did you grow up with it or, you know, you found it randomly on the internet. Boom. This is it. This is what I'm talking about type thing. <laughs> I try to start. Uh, well, you can, you can stop. Go. You, you stop. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the first time I watched it, it was two years ago and it was with the, um, Chinimisk video <laughs> that went viral and I got it recommended on my feed and I, I didn't know about accelerators really I, I was just like I don't know <laughs> I just looked at it I was like hmm I think I've heard that name before but I don't recall exactly where and uh yeah I just went watch it sounded interesting so I just went and watched the movies hey there you go. All right. Um, what about you, I, guess, I, I guess for me, it's like I remember because I, I used to grow up on Hot Wheels a lot of the time, um, especially as a kid. I remember that I was so into it. Like my my Nana got a um, someone around her neighborhood to craft me like a full on wooden garage, multi-level garage that I could just what? play my little Hot Wheels cars in. Yeah. <laughs> Like, and it's all Australian themed and everything. It was it was cool. It had sponsorships. Um and yeah, I, I just always I've always loved Hot Wheels as a kid and, and growing up. And I think it was one particular set, and I believe it was, if I can remember correctly, the Swamp track set. Um, and that was my first track set. And then eventually I got the Accelodrome, and then that came with a DVD. Clash on the Coast, which is the um, yeah beginning of ignition of um, ignition. So I watched that, and I just completely fell in love with it. And since then, I um, tracked down all the other movies. My fave, like I, I only had two full DVDs on DVD. That was the Speed of Silence and Breaking Point. Um, I watched the Speed of Silence religiously, 
Uh, <laughs> it's the best one. It's the best one. I just want to say, Speed of Silence know. is the best I don't one. Know. It's the best one. I'm in. Her, that's it. That's the one. That's nah, it. Nah, 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 nah. I, I, oh, the third one. Say <laughs> the third one. But yeah, nah. I think the, th- the third one probably takes no, it. Like, no, not breaking one's... point. Man. Breaking yeah. point's great. Come breaking on. Breaking point's bland. <laughs> uh, it's Marky. Whatever. Who cares about him? <laughs> Give me Bart Wheeler. <laughs> um. Yeah, and. I think through then it was just, you know, like, I just love the story. I love the characters. I love the cars. I started collecting a little bit of the cars, but I wasn't like a massive collector. Like I remember having, right. oh, what do I have? Spinebuster. I had Battle Spec, um, Spectite, um, Carbide. Or car- it's Carbide or Carbide? Um, carbide. Carbide. Carbide, that's it. Yeah. Um, yep, yep. I think Power Pipe or Power... Power pipes? No power pipes. Power like bomb. World but, race all of a no, sudden. No, power bomb. Um, oh, power bomb. Like, power bomb. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then I think that was really it. And then, unfortunately, I've, due to pass of time and hand-me-downs, I've lost the collection and I've lost all the Hot Wheels stuff. And yeah, but the memories still hold a good place in my heart and they inspire me to create a lot of stuff and everything. And yeah, they just keep the fuel going. They're, they're genuinely good movies yeah like and it, yeah. it's insane how people like I, I talk to people about it all the time and they're like oh it's just a kid's movie with like really bad you know <laughs> motion capture animation and i'm like okay buddy i mean <laughs> on, on a surface level i can understand yeah it's but when you dive into it it's actually really great and it's it, it it's, is it actually yeah. has a great story behind it yeah so yeah that, that's how i got my start like those uh what is it? The voice actors from Toonami or whatever hated it. And they were like, oh, this really? is trash. <laughs> they were like, they were like, we hated doing. And it was funny because, you know, they had to do the promos and stuff for it, you know, on Toonami. And so yeah, they were so, just so like, Steve oh, Blue yeah, was... this is this is junk. This is garbage. We hated it. It's not like Transformers. <laughs> it's like, what are you talking? It's exactly like Transformers. Yeah, like... It's, 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 it's just like, <laughs> it's exactly like, I think it personally pioneered a lot of different stuff like i like i think ben 10 was coming out at the same time um yeah and ben like 10. Mac, and the new reboot of max steel uh bionicle as well yeah max like steel. just j- just that era of of like really nice entertainment within uh kids media that also had a rich story behind it and i think yeah. accelerators was the best at doing that Definitely. yeah the the quality writing that's what we love yeah absolutely it's just quality. It that that that's probably the one word I would describe it. Quality. Yeah. All right. My second question is, how did you get into the community now? So so we know where you came from when you were like, apparently watching a Chinny Misk video one day, or <laughs> a I'm just this rich dude. I've got like every single Hot Wheels. Like I got my own custom dioramas. <laughs> I got my own wooden die. <laughs> All right. I'm just messing no, with you right. at this point. All right. How'd you get into the community? How about that? There we go. We'll start with with Al Seg again because TPM, you be talking all the time. No, I'm just kidding. yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get used to that. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Is that personal experience hey. from work? Hey, oh, no, no. Wow. all right, we're getting the beef here. All right, uh, we, got, uh, we no, haven't no, even no, gotten no, no, to no, the no. content I, yet. I, I see how it is. No, no. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. Go, go, take the floor. Uh, um, <laughs> come on now. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, let me see how did i get into it uh, hmm. i was watching the movies and the first time i watched them in the spanish stuff which it sucks <laughs> to be honest <laughs> and i remember reading the comments like pointing out the small details because the first time i watched them i didn't pay much attention to them yeah but um, then I decided to rewatch them in English, which was better. And, you know, like, just start noticing those details. And then I finished the four movies. I realized that there wasn't a fifth one. <laughs> so I wanted to know. <laughs> yeah, <woo-hoo>, you joined <laughs> the cult. Yeah, we all are waiting. Yeah. <laughs> and, and because of that, I started the rabbit hole in yeah here i am <laughs> there you go all right there's the rabbit hole what about you tpm when did you get into the community side 
Well, I'll keep it short and sweet because of our sake here, pointing out my talkative motives. But um, the, when Vulcan Vugan called for voice actors, I just raised my hand. And that's how I got um, in the community. Like, I, I basically got in the community by auditioning for the Fog Realm, getting in, um, and just slowly but surely working my way within into the community and working alongside Vulcan. Um, yeah. I even got the opportunity to meet him in real life when I was up in America a couple of years ago. Oh. Um, yeah, I, I went down to Nashville. and Oh, yeah, to Nashville. We, that makes more sense. I was like, yeah, America's pretty big. Where, <laughs> where yeah, I was no, like, yeah, yeah, why no, didn't you come visit Nashville. me? Like, where, where <laughs> am I, am I, my chopped liver? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, no, like, yeah, it's, I just slowly, because of the fog realm, basically. Because of that short film and what we're doing and everything, that's how I got my start in the community and yeah. just edged my way into it. All right, sweet. That sounds pretty cool. Y'all already know my story. I've been here. i just been here. And honestly, Vulcan was the same person. Literally, it was the Roblox back then. <laughs> that was a long, long time ago now. Wow. Um, Roblox, man. Whew, there's some drama in there that we will not get into. Mm -mm. All right. My next question is for Alseg specifically, because everyone knows your art. Everyone loves it. I've hired you multiple times for thumbnails, for my own comic that, by the way, has hit 4,000 likes on Instagram now. We just passed it. I just, I just looked what? earlier. And I got to say, um, TPM, I beat you to it. Uh, we <laughs> did the comic first. All right. We, I just want to say that. I just want to say that. What do you think of that? You know, you you've got you've got a giant community of people that are actually really really loving your art. You know, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's a small community. I don't really, you know, care much about it. Four thousand um, likes. Yeah. I mean, it's not my account. <laughs> yeah. So it's your art. It's your art. I'm just it's, promoting. Yeah, I'm just yeah, a like... promoter. You know, I'm just a promoter fair point <laughs> um i don't know i think it's nice <laughs> that's it <laughs> i don't yeah, really think right. much that's of it she's super humble by the way if you couldn't tell <laughs> super super humble at this moment <laughs> what do you <laughs> what do you think of that tpm as someone that uh you know comes into this whole thing and is like hey we want some art for the community <laughs> I, I think I could. We could make a manga all of a sudden, and then you're like, "All right, I can't draw." Um, oh yeah, I'm I'm absolutely yeah. terrible. Um, I can't draw the same of life at all. Um, <laughs> same boat. And same. honestly, I'm and I keep saying this to her personally as well, and throughout the videos I post on YouTube. But I'm honestly very grateful that she's signed up for this project, and she's actually putting in all her efforts into it and time. And it's honestly, some of the pages blow my mind. They really do. And they, and the style that we work with and the inspirations that we worked with, which I'm sure we'll get into in a moment, um, yeah. they reflect in her artwork and they excel to a whole new level. It's, it's really just amazing to see. <laughs> like I, I did read through her comic, her own personal comic mirror. And yes, I was reading was that too. Yeah, just want to say art, we, were, we were all reading it. Those that are hardcore fans yeah. out here actually support the artist. <laughs> yeah, just want to say. Yeah, support the artist and support yeah. get this that one AI crap out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but support the artist because especially this one, she's absolutely phenomenal. She's her art is definitely on another level and. When we release the first issue, which will be very soon, hopefully, at the at the time of recording, of course, it's gonna blow your minds too. It's it's genuinely some of the most impressing art I've seen in a very long time. So it's it's amazing, genuinely amazing. Sweet, sounds awesome. So let's get into that then. The inspiration for wanting to do this because, you know, who would ever thought? Yeah, you know, I don't ever think about background characters too much, especially ones that are literally, hey, this is just a three D animation. You know, they're throwing random crap in the background, of course, sometimes. And then you're over here like, yeah, but who is that? But who is that? 
but <laughs> but hey, this is Acceleracers. Like, we can't just let that go by. You can't just put a guy there, you know. What's the inspiration behind you wanting to get into this and, and all that? I, I think for me, like, again, it was watching Clash on the Coast so many times. And the fact that I just love street racing. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I love accelerators i love its futuristic um styling i love its sci-fi aspects i love old guys in mechanical suits um but at the end of the day i just really love to see the realism behind it and i mm -hmm. feel like with ignition and with the series itself they kind of just abandoned it all together because mm. that's not the main focus and right. to have people in the background as well at that race, I figured that, well, of course there's going to be complications. Like this is the race after everything that went down between Nolo and Talk. Um, so of course there's a lot of stuff on like high alert, you know, like stuff that's like very much at stake. Um, yeah. So having a background character observe that, is you know like it's obviously we're going to explore that and the fact that they just straight up abandoned their crews you know <laughs> like yeah just yeah like... that's a good point actually uh <laughs> one of the things we don't talk about is literally metal maniacs and detective or these rival gangs and then all of a sudden poof they're gone you know they just yeah. disappear from existence <laughs> and i i like i did like how uh in your intro on your youtube channel you you go about like Yo, what happened to these guys? These guys are just left behind in the dust. Like, what's going to happen to them? And and it brings also, in my opinion, a better perspective on how to do fan content without trying to continue a story necessarily that has been super hyped up. You know, in 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 that people are got the giant expectations, right? Of like, oh, if you're going to do Acceleracy's five or six or seven or whatever, you're going to have to do it like the very very best, right? Yeah, uh, it's got to be the best script. It's got to be everything. Everything's got to flow correctly. And with this, you're able to just bring life back into the world. And this is my opinion. I love that. Like, I want to know more about the world before maybe continuing on um, past the Vert Wheeler and dad point. Uh, like, yeah, I want to know I, what I, happens in the two year time gap type stuff. I, I feel I feel like, well, like, I don't know if I could say... I don't know if I could say this, but it's very much like... It's set as a side story to the Accelerators movies. Like, it spans from Ignition to Ultimate Race. Okay. So it's not technically in the, the two-year bracket. There may be a couple stuff it's, in there it's, that so we it's right. It's right when they leave. It's, it's right, right when they right leave. When they leave. Work with it's Tesla. Basically, yeah, it's right when they leave. Um, that That is when the story starts um and that's that's when i see like if this is like accelerates project territory just goes down and it's a branching path gotcha. so that it's it's basically like a side story to a pre-existing universe that isn't necessarily a sequel because yeah. i I've, I've seen a lot of stuff and it includes like tom wheeler's the finish line it includes accelerates one um and all these other different fan comics they're all focusing on the future they're all focusing right. on what is there or stuff that isn't really clearly um, shown, like the accelerators, like not accelerators, um, accelerons law, right. and like what they, what they do. For for me, it was all about it was all about bringing realism to a world that didn't have it, and that's what Project Territory is at, at its heart. It's just telling a realistic story within a world that goes beyond realism um and the implications behind that okay what was the let's do this moment for you and i'll say what was that you know was it just you being like all right i'll say i've got this here and i'll say for you was it like nah that's dumb <laughs> 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 sorry i am making that up entirely i'm just trying to get some, some thoughts and opinions Let's, actually because we heard from from you tpm what what was the moment i'll say that you were like okay is this guy actually got something here or or are we just like met, is this like terrible like you know what i mean uh be honest come on 
No, 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 no. I, I like the characters because, you know, he went, bueno, Vulcan sent him to me. And he told oh, me, oh, okay. I have a friend who wants to commission something. And I was like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. And then he showed me like his brief of the story. And I was like, oh, that sounds actually pretty interesting. And yeah, I basically like the characters and at least the first like portion of the story because he didn't have everything like put together. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, that's basically it. (laughs) That's basically it. See how short that was compared to TPM over here being like, oh, yeah, totally I like that. characters. This isn't, this isn't a bashing session, right? Sorry. We're just talking sorry. about... Nah, time. nah, you're I'll not call sorry. Time. This... <laughs> <laughs> I just need to lighten the mood here. I'm just saying, all right. The two Teku t-shirts are teaming up against this dune rat over here in this like brown <laughs> jacket, all right? I just want to say, this is... This is obviously this is obviously totally scripted. <laughs> um, I guess so. So so TPM, you know, you're talking to Vulcan. You're like, hey, you know, we're doing this other Fog Realm project that people know about. You're one of the voice actors in it, and then you just have an epiphany. You're like, yo, I want to start my own story. What we were talking about before. So you ask. I'm guessing you were gonna ask Vulcan or something about like doing what he originally had the idea of doing, which is doing like 3D. Uh, models in this comic or something like that or you were like no i need someone to draw this so who do i go to i mean originally it was like originally i was thinking like maybe we can make it into an animation but then i realized that because i'm trying to learn it and everything like that Mm -hmm. especially with my work on the film um I decided that maybe let's make it a comic, but not just a comic. Let's make it something that no one's ever seen. Let's make it a manga. Let's make it something that is totally unique. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Vulcan, like I said, like I was like I said, said, um, Vulcan got me into contact, and I just said, "Hey, I've seen your art. You're incredible. It's really amazing. Could you do some character concepts for me?" And could you okay. have a look at the brief and see if you like it? Which, thankfully, she likes, um, <laughs> which is great. The win. Um, yeah. But um, but yeah, it basically it was humble beginnings. It just started out with four characters and four cars, and yeah, that's basically what it started off as. And then, gotcha. eventually, she agreed, and like here we yeah. are, basically. Yeah. And and I and I want to ask you also. Is it easier to do the the sort of black and white manga style versus the the color style you're known for doing? Is that easier or harder because you're you're trying to do everything in black and white now? Mm, it's easier because it takes less time, but mm-hmm. you know sometimes with color you feel like empty spaces. Here you have to add more detail to the line art, and that can take a little bit more of time. Um, okay. But now it, it takes way less time. Like I feel if it was full color right now, we would be at page fifteen, maybe. Yeah, that's still yeah. impressive. And I just want to say at... that that's still impressive. By the way, <laughs> fifteen pages of full color <laughs> yeah. is wild. It's it's crazy, yeah, I don't especially know how you with do the it. amount of detail she puts in. <laughs> really, I don't know how you do it, actually because I mean you did my comic and that was only four four like squares in, in like a day or two. I don't remember how how long it was, but it was pretty quick. Yeah, it's okay. And, and you did two car cons. I mean, you put slingshot in there originally, and then you're like, wait, do you want slingshot or do you want uh, sw- uh switchback? And I was like, oh, switchback would be good. Oh yeah, it's just there. Okay. Okay, that just that that's just how <laughs> artists are. You know, they're just built different, and, and and that is something to be super impressed by. Yeah. Because I don't understand anything at all when it comes to art. If I'm honest, you've seen maybe I could show it here. You've seen my my sketches. It's yeah. it is yeah. it is it's, yeah. It's stick figures. That's how I draw. You know, and then all of a sudden I send this to her, and she's like. Oh yeah, here's like actual art now. You know, this is how it's supposed to look. Yeah, I'm like, oh, cool, gotcha. Yeah, that's sweet. Bet on it. You know, so I'll, I'll have to show the the side by side there for people that may not know. But that's 
it, it was rough. It was rough, buddy, in the words of Sokka. Yeah. Um, <laughs> see? Honesty. It's okay to be honest with me. It's all right. We all know I'm I'm not the artist guy. I'm the guy that goes on the Adobe Illustrator and is like, okay, I think I can make this. And then, boom, <laughs> Deku. All right, there we go. Yeah. That's, that's how I do it, you know? Um, so that's, that is super interesting, actually, to learn, though, with, with manga being, you know, you have much more line art and it's not just simply easier it is easier in the in the fact that it takes less time but it takes more work to find out you know what you're talking about with empty spaces i just want people to know that that it's not like oh yeah it's just easier you know it's just black and white all of a sudden no this is like hmm. it is a certain style yeah. and there it's a it is a very artistic style as well and it's it's important to realize that for people listening in i um, guess <laughs> I guess so. It is a hundred percent fact. You said it. I agree with that. It's okay to be humble. Humble brag. All seg is the best. All right, that's mm-hmm. what I'm going on. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you think the the popularity of this project uh, could be in terms of like? All right, uh, you know, already I see a lot of people responding to it very well on Reddit and Instagram and stuff. Um, you expect this to do super super duper well or is it like hey we're gonna do our best if it does well it's awesome but if it doesn't we created a a banger story you know you take it i'll say i'm talking too much apparently Uh, (laughs) (laughs) um you know i'm the type of person who doesn't like to have expectations but (laughs) i'm gonna say but um you know, I think, yeah, people are going to like it because at least the first time, uh, for one, because I'm doing it, <laughs> and two, <laughs> because... <laughs> fair. It's fair. Hey, everyone loves their art. So, I mean, that's fair right there. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> Let me explain that. <laughs> okay, okay. Because I remember the first time I, you know, like, posted about the finish line. Well, the first time I announced it before I finished it, there was some air of skepticism because I think the community tried to make comics before, but they never yes. got finished or yes. never. Let's just say never it happened at all. Four or five <laughs> times. Time. I'm not even like like Vulcan tried to <laughs> yeah. do one. Uh, the finish, not the finish line. The other one, the edge, the, well. the one, the endless. <laughs> and funnily enough, the only reason I knew about Red Bubble and starting to do T-shirts was because of I think the edge, and he had some t-shirts and i was like i can do better and that's what happened there so this is your i can yeah. do better than them no <laughs> <laughs> oh, now you say no nah, okay. uh, no no <laughs> no 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 because because the reason i made the finish line was to practice for my own comic um, basically oh. so it was just like practicing and i did it and when i posted it you know, it got super popular and I wasn't, that wasn't on my plans at all, really. But now I feel it's like, oh, you know, Alseg is doing it because she has already done stuff before. So there's some air of certainty now for that. So you, you think there's more pressure on you now because you did such a good job back then and everyone's expecting you to do a good job now? Uh. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, it looks better than the finish line, I'm gonna lie. Uh, she's already one-upping herself. She's like, yeah, you remember that finish line project? This is gonna be better. <laughs> yeah, it sucks now. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> wow. I doubt that. I mean, I'm, it's it ain't that bad, all right? All right. You gotta start from somewhere. It's true. Always do I mean, it. have yeah. you seen my first YouTube videos? Those are horrendous. <laughs> horrendous hey guys i'm gonna show you i'm gonna show you my gameplay on hot wheels infinite loot yeah (laughs) on an iphone 5s or whatever i don't know what it was i I still have youtube videos that are still on the internet that i refuse to show anyone because they're that bad i've uh i've since privated all my minecraft let's plays you will never find (laughs) yeah they're all mine now i i used to do comic dubs back in the day so i used oh, to like okay. take a picture of a comic 
and get all my little friends from primary school to come in or elementary school up in the States um, and just do voices for them. And, oh, God. <laughs> it was just, uh, I, I couldn't. I couldn't. It's okay. It was, it was, it's okay. I, yeah, no. I it's understand. Oh, man. <laughs> I had middle schooler me talking about Roblox and Minecraft on YouTube as well. <laughs> that ain't but it, it was cool back then. I mean, yeah, it kind of was, but it was like, because Minecraft was so big back then. I mean, I had a video with no sound. I had a no sound video on Minecraft, and it hit like, I don't remember, like 50 views. I was like, whoa, as a little kid. I was like, no way, 50 views, that's crazy. I mean, even now, I'm like, 100 views, I can't believe we did it. Um, so yeah, that was that was pretty fun. Um, I guess I guess to get back on track, because about Minecraft, <laughs> which has nothing to do with accelerators other than the terrible um, fan mods. No, they're not. We're, I'm just kidding, guys. I'm just kidding. We love your fan mods on, on Minecraft. They're actually great. It's all good. We love everything in the community. Trust me. I'm I was just kidding. Like legit. I'm just kidding. Okay, I'm gonna move on. Um, what was? You know, hold up. I'm gonna throw this at you through the camera. So so TPM. Um, yep. you know, what was your goal with this project at the very end? You know, what is, why don't you just take that away? What's the goal for this project at the, end, at the very end? To put it short and simple, um, basically just to prove that we can actually put out something that's like, that actually like can serve and tell a full story. Mm. Um, like I know, like as I mentioned in the update video, if this does receive well, it could go to a nine issue series. Um, but if it doesn't, then three issues would tell a complete story. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Very, it's very much like I want to be able to tell a complete story for a community that's been wanting something to be completed because oh. they never got the chance. And that's yeah. and that's why I decided to really go for it and really try my hardest into writing something that not only is great but also is completed. You know, yeah. Not 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 to like trash talk on any other people that have to do unfinished projects. Like I get it. Like there's time yeah, constraints. It's there's tough. Financial. There's like different situations. Hardware issues. Like, mate. Like what? It's just terrible. Some of the working conditions we're living in the world right now, and like just trying to create your own thing. That's all the props you need to give to yourself anyway. You know, like being able to try and do something is better than doing nothing. Um, mm. But for me, I want to try and give a completed process and a completed progress on everything um, to a community, to a community that I've been wanting it for a long time. Um, let's get into that then about the story. So we touched on it a little bit. We talked about how this is going to be starting off right after basically Clash of the Coast. We're going to be talking about the background characters now, so we're not going to be talking about no foreground Nolo stuff. He's out of here. He gone. All right, we're talking about these new characters. What are their names? Because I don't remember them off the top of my head, other than Justin, which <laughs> I just want to say. That's me, baby. That's me. All right? That's... <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just messing. <laughs> just the first name. Just the first name. All right. Let's start off with Barbie Helford. Um, she is the Teku Queen um, and a new reigning monarch since Nolo's disappearance. Um, okay. She's a bit of an arrogant brat. Uh, she's hot headed, much like Nolo. Um, but it's a lot more brutal, I would say, and a lot more mean. <laughs> mm. Um. And yeah, she's just like I knew I wanted to call her Barbie from the get go. Not like originally her nickname was BB. Um, okay. But uh, I think we and it's still BB in the comics, but there's some name drops of Barbie in there as well. Um, okay. So yeah, nah, she's she's awesome. She's all inspired by Y2K trends. She's all inspired by like basically like the style of clothing the era, rich girl very much like Julie Runner is neck, all that stuff. Um, I think she's the only 
character that I've seen in Accelerator's lore that's worn high heels when re- when racing, which is <laughs> I don't oh, know. I thought, did, I thought um, what's your... did Karma? I think Karma. Karma, yeah. 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 Did Karma, Karma do it? Yeah. Oh. I don't think they changed her her model just for shoes. I doubt it. In fact, they, I mean oh, it's an I, old I... mainframe. I mean you know you do what you do, but. That's I think true. she's the, she's also the only one with skinny legs in in Acceleration. <laughs> that is very you know, true. Lonnie had them in World Race, and everyone else had them in World Race. But all of a sudden, we all got fat legs now. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably just those those jeans and those overalls, like the full on flannel, like um, it's just open- just <laughs> wide jeans, bell bottoms yeah, all the way and down. It's two got- skinny legs and <laughs> um, but no, Bobby Bobby is definitely inspired. Because what we did with the characters, we inspired them by the, some of the original casts of the Accelerator films. So mm-hmm. she's inspired by Nolo Pasaro and Karma Ice um, in terms of style, in terms of like appearance and all that type of stuff. Um, but yeah, no, she's she's awesome. She's beautiful, um, and like the the way that like I wrote her and everything is just like she's she's definitely gonna be taking over a lot of the comic. Let's just say. Okay. Neat. Um, now, I, I, I do have to ask. To oh, yeah. About <laughs> the name Barbie obviously being a Mattel thing. Again, I'm guessing. I, no? it, 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 yes. it was a reference. It's a reference to reference. Mattel's, um, you know, Barbie, as well as, like, you know, pop culture, Barbie movie, all yeah. that type of stuff yeah. coming Makes out. Sense. Makes sense. That's, that's probably why. It, it, it was just yeah. like, yeah, Barbie just wings, has a nice ring to it. <laughs> All right, sorry. Now we'll go to the next one. Elsa, you can take it away from there. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go with Rom, which is Justin Rom Matthews. Uh, he's basically the monkey equivalent of the Teku, let's say. <laughs> he's the take with of the Teku. And he's inspired mostly by Bert and Shirako. Like he's a mixture of the two. Uh, I love his character. He's really cute. <laughs> I relate to him so much. Um, what else? And yeah, he's also inspiring Y2K a little bit, trying to make him more casual too. Yeah, <laughs> he's gonna be the favorite. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's gonna oh, be the favorite. Okay. Got it. Yeah, got I, it. I reckon so too. Honestly, like he's just—he's just really fun. He's just—he's just shy, and timid, <laughs> very much like I don't want to be here. <laughs> like that's just. Oh, that's kind of the opposite of me now. I guess I used to be like that, but now I'm like I had to force myself not to be. You know, after being a well, YouTuber, your YouTube like, personality, of course. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, it ruined my actual personality, which used to be. I don't want to talk, bro. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> um yeah let's get into the next character uh tpm take us away uh let's start with the metal maniacs dexter chrome um dexter is basically the leader of well he's the appointed leader of the metal maniacs after talks um absence um he is probably the complete opposite to barbie he's very calm collected um but he also has a lot of anxiety in terms of becoming the leader he needs to be. And he's unique in the fact that he comes from Alaska, um, like nor- like Northern Alaska. Um, that's where he grew up from. And he ventured down to the States um, like sometime after that. Uh, but yeah, he's mainly inspired by Talkmatics and Taro Katana. Um, and like... And Knuckles. And, and Knuckles. <laughs> yeah, and Knuckles. <laughs> Oh, Knuckles? Hey, okay. Uh, the, the, okay, to give context. <laughs> um, so when we announced it, um, there was a Twitter <laughs> comment. I don't know if we could show it, um, if we could find oh, I'm it. I'm going to have to look. Is it on is it there, on There's a Twitter thread. Yours? I think it was... I don't, I don't know if it's on my... I think, I think it was on our sex one. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too check. sure. But you um, keep talking but while he, I'm checking. He basically said, oh, he's basically Knuckles. And <laughs> when I looked at him, I'm like, yeah, I guess he's yeah. kind of like Knuckles. So me and Al Seng have this um, inside joke of him just being inspired by Knuckles. Um, 
and all that stuff, which is fitting because Paramount just um, new TV the, show. Uh, I was about to say, yeah, the TV, new TV show, yeah. show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which um, I haven't seen a single episode. I haven't even seen the first two Sonic movies. I haven't. What? Yeah. Really? I, I, oh no, I haven't seen things. Uh, Yo, too busy. Not, I'm too busy. I don't watch anything. <laughs> Come on, I watch, watch my it. content and I'm on repeat editing. That's what I do. <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought you meant like, I just watch it regardless. Like even if it's no, completed. No, <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just always making content. You know, that's, that's my job. I, I think the only movie I, I saw like in the past month or two was uh Gran Turismo, which was really good. I liked Gran oh, yeah. Turismo a lot. So That's a good I finally got to see that one, but then Ferrari comes out. Haven't seen it. Oh well. Like <laughs> <laughs> my, my schedule does not allow for movie watching as much as it used to. That's fair. Um, but no, no, yeah, he's we jokingly um do the Knuckles um inspiration as well, and his personality is kind of like that as well. Like he's very calm, collected. Like I said, has a lot of anxiety as well. Um. He's definitely the complete opposite and and basically the antithesis to Bobby. And and watching them clash in the comic is just oh it's good. Sweet. It's it's really good. And you can tell like their different values and beliefs within how to handle the situation that, that they will be thrown in, or the races, how they run races, you know what I mean? So yeah, no, nah, Dex is really, really cool. And the fact that he comes from Alaska too is awesome as well definitely neat. a first that's that is neat actually i i do want to touch on that because you know you're you're kind of getting back into that world race mindset where people are from everywhere you know there's mm-hmm. people literally everywhere in this world and it's kind of cool to see again um within this comic uh i'll say take us away on the last character he's my compa because <laughs> he's mexican <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. I was like, what does that mean? I'm going to have to ask because I'm, <laughs> I'm as English as it gets. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, he's Otego. He's the mechanics, the mechanical of the Metal Maniacs. And he's like the only sane person in the comic, really. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like, guys, chill. Like, why are we street racing? I don't understand what's going on here. <laughs> <laughs> guy that but he's really funny um he's inspired mostly well in mexican mechanics you know like i have the experience of seeing mechanics so i was like hmm i'm gonna oh well he's also inspired on a friend of mine he's not a mechanic by the way (laughs) but just like the vibe of the metal maniacs he had it and i was like it will be a good opportunity to use him as a reference <laughs> and yeah he's the tallest of all of them and what else what else can i say i don't know <laughs> he's inspired by um who's he inspired by i think i forgot oh yeah 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 <laughs> no way you forgot yeah, oh, yeah. okay <laughs> Hi, no way <laughs> uh, by by? wild <laughs> and monkey i think yeah I think it's the two of them. Sweet. It's awesome to hear. I, I, I do love how y'all are able to, to already love these characters, and we're just here looking at their art like, looks interesting. What are they about? Don't know anything. <laughs> Haven't read anything yet. You know, y'all are like, no, nah, this is the best <laughs> thing ever. I'm just over here like, I'm just going to have to take your word for that at the moment, but it sounds pretty good. It sounds pretty awesome <laughs> here. Uh, we, we hope we're not building it up too much. <laughs> just let it <laughs> Nah, <laughs> trust me. It can't be as much as a fifth movie, so don't worry about it. All right, <laughs> let's, uh, I guess, so the, the, the characters, I just want to say, do sound super awesome. I love the idea of them being from everywhere. And then also taking the mantle like of second in command, sounds like, is sort of what they were, or maybe third in command, depending on if you count Karma as being supposedly the second in command. And then I guess with Torque. I guess Torque, yeah, he 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 didn't really have anyone else in command. He's like the leader, um, so I think Taro. that is who is it? Oh, Taro! Oh, yeah, you think Taro is second in command? I didn't. You know, I was thinking of Taro, but I didn't know for sure because you know he's he still is sort of lone wolfy in, in a way because he's like 
I don't know. When he said to to Gig, you know, Gig's like, is this how you choose a leader? And Taro's like, I don't know. Like, what are you talking about, Taro? And then, like, nobody listens to what happens in the race. Like, but then, like, in that exact Yeah, I let same, them race. Whatever. Who cares? Hot movie. Wheels, let's race. New show coming out. And no one's going to care about it. That's what it was yeah. just then. When... <laughs> well, it actually, oh, in the goodness. exact same movie, like, a couple minutes uh, like beforehand he says it takes more than a race to be a leader that is so true he, that is true. i think he that does i think he i think i'll say he's right i think he is like second in command as a, as a theory you know yet to be this feels weird i don't know because taro's like he's always been a scorcher and then all of a sudden boom metal maniacs promote him up to the second in command but with his cool demeanor it kind of makes sense because bro wins everything i don't know what he doesn't win Honestly, you could say the same with Mark Wilde. He was a way ripper, and then now he's locked up for two years. Good point. <laughs> Good point. And then the two just... years. That, that, see, that's what I want to know. I want to know what happens to this two-year time gap that everyone starts <laughs> hating each other all of a sudden. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, like Vert. Okay, Marky. Okay, who gave you your shot, bro? <laughs> like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, I'm going too far into the actual stuff. Let's get back into it. Um, you also have some amazing cars to go along with these. Now, tell us about what it was like trying to select these. Did did you both collaborate on this? Did was it mostly you TPM, or did also be like, you know, this would be a great a great car here. Um, uh, whichever one of you wants to start, go for it. Um, I I guess I will. Um, for me, it was like trying to select all the like I I had a bit of help as well. Um like in the background um, and everything, but mainly it was me and, and our seg, like trying to figure out what cars we want to use. Um, and then just seeing like, oh, would this work, would this work? Um, because our seg like just didn't like really collect the cars, I had to like basically give her a variety of different stuff. Um, and we narrowed down pretty easily, um, to be honest, like, because the cars now are Track Tune, Horseplay, Asheville Assault, and Rocket Oil Special. Um, and they all just seem to magically click. You know? Like, there, there wasn't, like, really, like, any um, type of, you know, like, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. You know? It just right. seemed to fit with all these with all these guys. Um, and then her art, and I'll pass it over to I'll, I'll say to talk about the art, because her art on these cars is magnificent. Um, <laughs> well, that was the hardest part because, you know, you have the cars, but you have to understand their form to apply certain stuff to them, well, graphics, and then understand the characters, right? Because they also have to reflect the characters. And I mean, it was kind of hard because, you know, horseplay is a uh, kind of interesting car <laughs> it looks funny let's say um yeah. so yeah i just had to you know reunite all the cars that they were previously designed and kind of understand where they came from and transform them so they could fit in the cars but it, it was really like a, i don't know five times iterating the same design and then when i was happy with it i was like yeah here it goes <laughs> what do you think of it and he yeah. will usually say yeah it's cool and that's it <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's good looks good well that's i think it. for horseplay originally correct me if i'm wrong i'll say but i think it was orange it was yellow it was yellow yeah, yeah. it was it was like a like, it was like a oh, so it was like jackhammer yellow. Yeah, camera yellow. Okay. Yeah. And then yeah. and then I was like, it looks kind of like similar and, and everything. Maybe try an army green. And then that's how we got the olive green. It was and it looks fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I like it uh, better. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So so which one is y'all's favorite for for, for you oh, also? Which God. one is your favorite? I mean horseplay. But there is another car that we cannot talk about it right now. Oh, you can't clear. do that to me. No, I can't. <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay. I see your secret. Keep your secret. 
secrets. Keep your secrets. Okay. <laughs> and 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 the one who selected that car um was actually Vulcan. He actually uh, Oh, so Vulcan, Vulcan knows. Vul Vulcan is the what only one that, that okay. knows. <laughs> Vulcan is the only one that knows um, that's fair, that's fair. Like that that future car selection. Um it's it's sick. <laughs> Um, <laughs> okay, okay, I get it. I get, I get but um, yes. So our sec will be definitely horseplay. Okay. If, if I if, if if I'm correct. Yeah. Would you would you say it's horseplay? Yeah. It looks... Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> sounds like sounds. Like... <laughs> For me, I think I'm a little bit biased. Um, track tune. Because track track tune, tune, let's go! Because track tune was, in fact, probably the very first Hot Wheels car that I can remember having. Dude, I so still having track tune there. there, it's yeah, it's a no-brainer. But there were yeah. other cars that we went through. Um, there were other cars that we that we went through, um, and everything. I think I have some of them on here because I have. Where is it? Ideas, potential cars. There we are. Did you ever yeah, did so, you use any uh cars that weren't released ever? Like any concept vehicles in the in the Hot Wheels lineup and stuff, you know, that were gonna get released, didn't get released type stuff? Or no? Um, no. I think we mainly just focus on the released stuff. Gotcha. And stuff that was from two thousand to two thousand and five. Ah. That like the golden age. That's where I mean, we it genuinely at what a hundred new castings in in two thousand two. I want to say or something like that. It's it's insane. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, and it 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 kind of. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. The car section it kind of stumped me a bit because so many of it was in Highway Thirty Five, or oh, yeah. they were licensed. Yeah. So trying right. to find unlicensed non-highway 35 non-accelerators vehicles killed me because <laughs> like it was just kind of like what yeah. can i do like you know yeah. like yeah even 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 with the even with the games because like i know for fog realm um we used yeah. some cars from the world race game using like uh and, pony up and stuff right yeah pony up silhouette 2 um empty suzuka um yeah, so like like we, we use those, but like trying to find stuff that was completely new, that that it was a challenge. But right. we had some like originally, um, I think Altego's car roll cage was gonna be up there a bit. Yo, what? Dude, roll, roll cage, cage <laughs> makes a cameo. That yeah, is a great car. So, some of these cars Contract are cameos. driver to let's get down and dirty. Let's go. All right. Yeah, now Ro Roll Cage was definitely one. Um, Tantrum was Barbie's alternative. Okay, um, I don't know that one off the top of my head. If I'm not wrong. It's another. It's another tuna roadster convertible type thing. Okay. Um, it's basically it's basically the alternative. Um, I guess Ultra Rage as uh, well yeah, yeah, yeah ultra rage is all right it's all right. yeah yeah, yeah. like there, right. there, there were there were cars that were on the chopping block and everything um and all that type of stuff but like yeah i think we nailed it down pretty well honestly yeah, for sure and don't worry some of these cars are in the first issue that there's going to be some cars that we haven't mentioned yet that are going to be in the first issue okay um, sweet as, as all right cameras. that's all i needed Sorry. to hear Cool. All right. I'll, I'll give you my favorite. You know, gosh, they're all my favorite. But I will say, Track Tune was my favorite as a kid. I had that thing. It is so beat up now. I mean, that thing, I played with it with the baseline and all that. My McDonald's baseline. I didn't have enough money for a real one. You know, I had the McDonald's one, and I'd play with that thing all the time. Loved Track Tune. So I think that was a perfect choice. I think everyone agrees Track Tune had to be in here. Um, I was genuinely surprised by horseplay and it looks awesome. Like, and I looked at some other versions of horseplay and I was like, wow, they do not livery this thing correctly. And then all said, like, hey, hold my beer. I'll do it for you. Okay, guys, like, <laughs> hold my beer. This thing is actually really fire and all you need is a cool livery. And, uh, yeah. I just have to say, you did such a great job on the liveries. They're all super nice and original. Nothing is like refreshed too much. 
Um, that's that's one of the things I will say about you know some people they'll just do a do a baseline version of like a different car in the Hot Wheels line, like which is still super. Yeah, it's still super cool, right? But it's like it's not super original. You know, I know it's some original because you're placing the decals in a different place, but to see like purely original stuff, kind of like what you did with Switchback originally, which I remember that conversation was hilarious being like, hey, who did the switchback? Was it a customizer? And then I was like, it says, no, it was, it was me. It was me. It was me. <laughs> the whole time. It was her. I'm telling you, she, she knows livery design so well. She does. It's so amazing. My, so my favorite amazing. detail on, and this is my favorite detail of all the cars. On Track Tune, it has little stars. There's like yeah. little stars surrounding it to make it look more, um, like glam and all that stuff and it just right. fits so well it genuinely yeah. fits so well um and i don't even know the characters like... and i'm gonna guess that's like her that's gonna be her it kind of looks it kind of almost looks like this this is the this is that barbie yeah it reminds me of this a little bit with the stars on the headlights just yeah a little bit just a little bit i don't know if that was even any inspiration or not but i just had that on my desk i didn't even know about it <laughs> <laughs> She's super original. She is the OG. No one else beats all seg. Mattel, hire this person right now. Hire her. What are we doing with our livery design? Come on. Well, I think I think we can I think it's already been confirmed, but Barbie drives track tune, Rome drives Asheville Assault, Dexter rides or uh, drives um horseplay, and Ortega drives fucking all special. Then that that's their cars. Yeah. That and it makes sense in their designs. Wild. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I'm trying to think of what else we could talk about here because I didn't have any more questions because I was so unprepared. I am the unprepared. <laughs> I just want to let everyone know that's watching this. <laughs> super unprepared. Just in case squared. This is my first time back in like months in doing a podcast recording. Um, so if anyone's to blame, <laughs> yeah, blame me. Uh, is Oh, I was going to ask this. Is there any, um, is there any release area release date area that you're thinking not like a release date per se but like last quarter of the year uh next year uh stuff like that what what's the um what's the schedule looking like guys um for us and i've said this a lot of the time we don't want to be restricted by and all pressured by release dates right um we want to basically we both agreed and it's really amazing that we did both agree on this um to take our time with it to actually really deliver something that's that's like has great quality not surrounded by pressure or build up or expectations you know that's that's what we set for ourselves because it takes a toll it does it genuinely takes a toll and it, it like i'm sure for our sake it takes like a full one as an as an illustrator and a and an amazing one of that like you get so freaked out by like, oh, can I really live up to this or can I do this? Same as writing. Like for me, this is my first proper writing after Fog Realm, you know? And like it's very much just like it, I'm worried that the, the like the, the anxiety will come into the fact that like, oh, am I producing a bad product? Am I producing something that people are not going to like? And that's why we really want to take our time with it. Um, but I will say progress is going well, I guess. Is there anything that y'all want to say in regards to this? You know, what, I guess your final thoughts on, on doing this project is I think, I think I got yours TPM with, with, uh, you know, your release, taking your time with it. You and Al said, hmm. um, is there any, any other final thoughts that you may have to want to tell people about your project? Hmm. Uh, well, not much. I just hope people enjoy it and they can actually read it. Because <laughs> sometimes I feel like it's unreadable because of the detail and, you know, the globes. Oh, well, how do you call it? Balloons. The dialogue balloons. Um, and and I, ho I hope it flows well. But yeah. We'll see. Um, I just hope everyone, you, you know, likes it. Yeah, same, same here. That's, the, awesome. that's what we can hope. And that's what I hope, too. Honestly, <laughs> I can't wait to read this thing. 
I'm looking super, super forward to it. Um, where can people find and how can they support you? So first, you know, your social medias, and then how can they, maybe do you have a Patreon? Do you have anything that, that can go towards uh, supporting the project directly? If you don't, that's all right. Uh, just let us know. What's it up? Uh, TPM, you go first, and then I'll say, you go second. Um, so in terms of reading it, uh, it's yet to be announced, but we are indeed cooking up something um, and, and currently making an, an announcement video on where you can read it. And that will be in line with the release date as well um, when, when we figure that out, basically. Um, so, yeah, it was very much like... Um, yeah, it, it'll, it'll be reviewed in, in... It'll be, you know, unveiled um, very, very shortly. Um, yeah. But, yeah, in terms of socials, you can come support... My, for me personally, you can come support me on YouTube, Twitter, Reddit... Um, and my Instagram, which are all linked in all the social medias under Linktree. So if you find the link, you can find everything else there. Um, is that under, yeah, is I mean, that under TPMVA and stuff? Yeah, T, at TPMVA for Twitter and then also YouTube as well. Reddit, it's <laughs> apprehensive peace for some reason. Let's be uh, honest. <laughs> all of our Reddits are pretty trash. Because um, yeah. they won't let you change it. They won't let you change it. It's so frustrating. Yeah, no, they won't. <laughs> so frustrating. Um, what about you all, Seg? Uh, well, I mean, X, aka Twitter, <laughs> as all Seg, and lower case dash line. I don't know how it's called. <laughs> yeah, underscore, uh, underscore. Yeah. Underscore, that is. Um, and I also have a Reddit, but it's called just a Sonic fan, so. <laughs> that one's better. That yeah, one's better, actually. It's, it's trash. <laughs> Not that bad. But honestly. yeah, you can find me there. Those are your only socials. What about your other comic? Where can they find your other comic and stuff? Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, right now, I'm just posting it in Global Comics. I generally think that's the best platform. <laughs> so yeah, mm -hmm. I'm updating there every blue moon, really. <laughs> okay. <laughs> For comic, it's right. just abandoned now. Oh, no. <laughs> It's okay because you're working on uh, a comic right now, and then you'll work on that comic maybe later. Yeah. It all happens at some point. It's okay. Life happens. That's what we're talking about. The whole thing. Um, where we can find me at pretty much everything under the sun: Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Reddit, YouTube. JC Squared. That's J A Y C E E Space Squared. That you can search that in Google. Just put JC Squared. I'm literally there. You can find me on pretty much everything. So follow me on everything because it's great. Um, this has been the Square Corner Podcast, but I do want to thank my awesome members. The members are, oh no, where did they go? Did I have, oh, there they are. It is Accelerys, Ratchet RPG 01, and Citrus 3. Thank you so, so much for supporting the channel directly on the join button. If you click that, you get support for $5 a month. That's $4.99 a month. And you get special access to behind the scenes, upcoming podcast episodes before everyone else. And I mean, you get some amazing content that I put behind the paywall for you and you alone, because guess what? I want you to support me. And also, I want to give you something worth supporting. All right. Um, with all that said, are there any last moments or any last words for each of y'all? Any last lines? Go for it. This is the time. Um, I guess just stay tuned and get excited. This thing's going to blow everyone's minds. And honestly... I can't wait for you all to read what me and Aztec have truly developed. It's going to be uh, one amazing journey. Okay, as for the date, I think we didn't announce it. But um, I'm calculating that it may be released around April, March, something Whoa. like that. Okay. Whoa, okay. Just wait <laughs> wow, all right. <laughs> She jumped the gun. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> hey, look. You didn't. You, hey, look. All right. April, March area. Okay. But hey, <laughs> just so you know, if they don't hit that, make sure to support them still. They're going to be working on it super, super duper hard for you guys to enjoy and watch. So don't miss it. Make sure to follow them on all their social medias to stay up to date, especially <laughs> TPM and Alseg. Mine is probably just going to be like telling you exactly what they told you. So, I mean. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's all I do. I just retweet stuff, you know. Um, so yeah, go follow them, especially especially follow them. All right. I uh, want to wish everyone a great day. Stay blessed. We'll see you in the next podcast episode. Goodbye. Bye bye. This has been the Squared Corner Podcast. Music composed by Steve Rocket. Video and audio recording by Riverside.fm. Video and audio editing by JC Squared. Logo art by Miguel Martinez. And lastly, supported by you, the viewer. Thank you.